What's up guys, Josh Mosman here. Welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 68, presented by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. As mentioned on the title and featured image, I got to ride an Alta Redshift electric dirt bike for the very first time. Seen these around for years and years. The company went out of business in 2018, but they're still at the track here and there. I got my hands on one for the very first time this past week. We're also gonna talk about St. Louis Supercross and the carnage that it was, as usual, Supercross is always gnarly. This weekend was especially gnarly. Um, we're going to talk about that in this video and we're going to look ahead to the World Two Stroke Championships this weekend at Glen Helen. Let's dive into it. All right, first off, we got to talk about me riding this Alta electric bike. Basically, I was out at Fox Raceway with a bunch of buddies this past weekend testing different bikes and I saw the Alta go by. I said, man, how cool would it be if that guy let me do a lap on his bike? And really, in the back of my mind, I was thinking about Stark Varg, the brand new electric bike that everybody's talking about. Well, they invited me and the MX a wrecking crew to go over to Spain to try out the bike for the first time in May, just over a month from now. And I've actually never really ridden a true electric motocross bike. I've never ridden the Alta, even though it's been around for a long time, I've never ridden it before. So finally got my hands on one. Um, Alta went out of business back in 2018, but they're still around at the track. Thanks to Brian Haskell for letting me ride his bike. I got an interview right here with Brian talking about the pros and cons of the Alta and uh, what he thinks about electric bikes. All right, what's up guys? We we are at Fox Raceway or Paula and today we're riding two strokes, four strokes. I saw Brian here on the Alta and uh, I was interested. I was like, man, I've never ridden one of these bikes and I wanted to give it a try. And my buddy Shelby, who was standing right next to me, said, hey, I know Brian, he'll let you try it. And uh, so that's how that's how this basically worked out. And uh, this thing is super exotic looking. Alta's been around for a long time, so it's not a new motorcycle. Um, and, and Brian was reminding me Alta went away back in 2018, but there's still a few of them at the track. I was surprised to see him go by me earlier today when I was on the side of the track and he was jumping the doubles. I couldn't hear him. Gosh, there's so many great things about electric dirt bikes. First off, they're so easy to ride. You don't have to worry about shifting or using a clutch. So if you think about it, you're always in the right gear all the time. And a lot of the mistakes you make out on the motocross track, maybe you're in the wrong gear or you miss a shift. Yeah. Hopefully you don't, but you miss a shift. And this thing, you're just in the right gear all the time. You have all the power you need all the time and it's super smooth. There's no vibration whatsoever. Yep. And guys like me, I actually have tinnitus uh, from riding gas bikes many years. So on the right side, super loud exhaust. So my right ear actually is ringing a little bit. Gotcha. This bike's a dream for that. So on a gas bike, typically I'll wear earplugs. I don't have to do that with this. Yeah. It's super nice. nice. Um, cons, people can't hear me coming. <laughs> yeah. um, so I spook people yeah. pretty often. And yeah. you know, I just have to be careful when I'm passing guys that I give them enough room and really make sure they understand that I'm there and stuff. But it's really not a con. It's just something you have to deal with. It's totally. actually quite fun sneaking up on people and <laughs> you know, spooking them a little bit. But man, that's cool. it's just so much fun to ride. It's really, there's no other bike that offers the experience that an electric bike does. And uh, can't wait for you to try it out. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out. It's going to be pretty fun. And uh, Brian here is also the first, uh, placed the first order for the Stark Park. So, um, pretty interesting stuff. The Stark guys talked about it and they're actually going to fly you over there, right? To ride in Spain? Yeah, so uh, I'm getting married in June, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, So I'll be going over to Spain uh, shortly after my wedding. Uh, I can't wait to ride that bike. It looks about on par, if not better, than this bike. So I'm really excited to, to ride that bike. It's got great components, it's got good specs, and uh, those guys know what they're really doing over there. So. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have a blast over there when you go, and I'm sure I will too. So. Sweet, sweet. All right, let's try this thing out. Thank <laughs> you. 
you want to do uh, both of us or you just want to talk about it? Yeah, I'll throw you in. Okay. All right. All right. That was very, very surprising. I'm still like trying to process what happened, but it was really fun. Like at the inside table over there in that far rhythm section where like the finish line normally is on the KTM and the gas gas 150, it was tough to get that inside inside line and still clear the tabletop. And I basically stopped in the turn, turned the electricity on and cleared it. So that was pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, but dude, it's a little, it's definitely heavy. But it is so much fun mm -hmm. thinking like hitting ruts and not worrying about uh, shifting yeah. or the or the clutch. It's like definitely more fun than I expected, and definitely made me want one a lot more than I expected. <laughs> and I don't know, man. Like I love so this, I love two strokes. I love four strokes. This is the exact same uh, reaction everybody has when they get off this thing. They're just blown away. Yeah. Because before you, you ride it, you're like, oh, it's probably like a golf cart. It's going to be lame. Yeah. But these things are the real deal, man. Yeah. And just like you said, like with these bikes, with the power curve and everything and no shifting or clutch work, you could take inside lines or lines you probably wouldn't even think of on yeah. a gas bike just because it has the acceleration and the power and you're always in the right gear all the time, like I was yeah. saying before. So. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like electric bikes. This is going to go on YouTube. I know a lot of our followers don't like electric bikes. Personally, I never want to see four strokes or two strokes ever go away. Definitely not pushing any agendas on it like that, but definitely just want to get my first impression. I was very surprised and uh, I never want to see four strokes or two strokes go away. And I think supercross and motocross is extremely challenging. It's the toughest sport in the world. Supercross is just insane. And the nationals are insane as well. And part of that is you're shifting while you're coming, you're shifting fourth gear before you hit the whoop section or you're shifting, you know, third gear before you hit the, the, the red by Laraco's leap that I had to hit on my 450, you know, like there's stuff that, that you don't, you don't, you don't get on an electric bike. So it's definitely different. And I'm still processing my full opinion on them, but uh, yeah, super I, fun. I'm the same way too. I, I've owned gas bikes too. And I don't really want electric to replace gas because gas bikes are really fun too. But I think they're going to be great options for people. Yeah. And I think it's going to actually draw new people to the sport as well. Yeah. Because I was mentioning last night, um, you can really tailor the power however you need it on these bikes. Yeah. They can have insane power for a you know, pro rider like you, or you could throw like my fiance on it who's never ridden a bike before and tame the power down. It's yeah. perfectly fine. So yeah. it's really going to be, I think, game changing for the sport. Yeah. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Uh, other than that, and Brian has a YouTube channel. Check him out on there. Where can people find more about you? Because he's got a video that's got 2 million views. Him get whole shotting a Yamaha YZ450F. Off the start at Kihia, and Kihia is at elevation. You got yeah, it. Chances are they probably saw it already. Probably already seen it. You guys can find me on Instagram and YouTube at BW Haskell. Um, plain and simple. All right, there you go. Give him a follow, and uh, thank you guys for watching the video. This is on lap number one, oh, and just a harness going over the handle. Here's Brown involved in this one, nowhere to go. And Ricky, this was a little technical because it looks like he hits a tough block right there. Only lost night, but then when you get a bad get start, you're, you, you're subject yourself to this kind of stuff. Right, really no. so, man. You take hard licks like that, it can let, <sighs> leave a lasting effect. Alex Martin, he has had a rough go out block, in. goes sideways, puts that left foot down. Let's hope he's okay across right. history, but this guy right here, there goes Andrew. Next up, we got to talk about the St. Louis Supercross. Marvin Muskian grabbed his first win of the 2022 season and his 10th win of his career in the 450 class. Pretty impressive for Marvin Muskian, and it's definitely a shot in the arm for the KTM team and for Marvin. Both have had a tough go at the Supercross series this year. Cooper Webb was missing due to a practice crash that he had, put him out for St. Louis, and uh, KTM has been struggling after Cooper got on the podium the first weekend of the year with that second KTM has really struggled to uh, find their footing and they haven't had a win so far this season and the question mark has been will KTM get a win will Cooper Webb get a win well we don't know if Cooper Webb's going to get a win but Marvin Moose can he did check that off the list he got his 10th win of his career first win on the new model for KTM and uh, it's a definitely a big shot in the arm for Marvin Moose can in his career as well as right now he only has a supercross contract for the 2022 
season and things are in question for 2023. So this win will definitely help him in negotiating contracts either with KTM or with another brand for 2023. And uh, everybody's been asking Marvin, what's your plan? Are you retiring? What's going on? And uh, he still plans on racing. He still hopes to go racing. I think this win will definitely shoot that plan further forward. It was also a big night for the Husqvarna team. Rockstar Husky got their first win of the season in the 250 class with RJ Hampshire getting his first ever win in the 250 Supercross main event. Uh, it was an overall win at the Triple Crown and pretty wild stuff. So uh, RJ, I thought he had already won a 250 main event by now, but apparently he hasn't. Um, his first win ever St. Louis Supercross, also a win for the KTM group, having their new Rockstar edition, the Husky 250 win, 250 main event. So good times for RJ Hampshire. He's a buddy of mine and I'm stoked to see him get the win. And uh, you can see a huge weight lifted off of his shoulders after the main event. We also have some injury updates as you guys probably saw on TV. St. Louis Supercross was a brutal one. Lots of big crashes going on during the night show. Dean Wilson had the biggest one and then one of the most gnarly crashes we've seen, uh, or at least gnarly injuries we've seen, something that doesn't happen very often. Uh, he got a foot peg to the butt and he talked about it on Instagram. Thankfully, he is relatively okay. He had two surgeries on Saturday night and another one scheduled after that. Hopefully things continue to progress in the right direction for Dean Wilson. He said that his, his laceration in his behind was 10 inches deep. You could stick your whole hand in there, um, according to the doctor and according to Dean Wilson on his Instagram. So best of wishes to Dean Wilson. Um, great rider, a great ambassador for our sport. He's a lot of fun to follow on social media and uh, always a nice guy at the races. We also have an injury update for Kyle Peters. Kyle Peters, the Phoenix Racing Honda 250 rider. He is the Arena Cross champion and he was the reason for the red flag in the 250 main event um, as he was hauled off the track. You could see that he was moving his arms and legs around a little bit on the track, but uh, he ended up breaking his C5 and C6 vertebrae in his neck. Phoenix Racing Honda team posted that he had surgery and that he was uh, that the surgery went well and he's on the road to recovery now. So all the best for Kyle Peters and Dean Wilson and the rest of the riders that took hard hits on Saturday. Next up, we'll talk about the World Two Stroke Championship coming up this Saturday. It's uh, Easter weekend, Saturday, April 16th at Glen Helen. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of heavy hitters on the sign-up list that are planning on coming. Um, excited to see everybody there. We talked about it in videos prior, but Zach Osborne, Josh Grant, Mike Alessi, some heavy, heavy hitters. They're going to be racing the Open Pro Two Stroke class this weekend at Glen Helen. They also have the Pasha 125 class, uh, Pasha 125 Open Pro, so you can run up to a 150. I have a screaming 150 from Schneike and Mitch Payton over at Pro Circuit. That thing is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm also racing a stock Gas Gas 252 Shoke. Well, not really stock. It's got a pipe and uh, some other mods to it. 252 Shoke in the Open Pro class. That one you can run up to 300s, 500s. You've seen it all in the two Shoke class there. So going to be a lot of fun this weekend. It's a Saturday only race. So people have asked me, is it Saturday and Sunday? What day is my class on? It's all on Saturday. So get your racing in on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Track's going to be brutal. And then Easter Sunday, you can take it off. Uh, no racing, no riding on Sunday. So good times this weekend. Glen Helen World Two Stroke Championships. If you're not in California and you're not planning on being there, check out motocrossactionmag.com. So we'll have videos from the race. We'll have race results from the race. And we'll have some articles showing off some of the two strokes in the pits at the track as well. It's going to be a fun time. All right, guys, that's it for this video. We had a lot of fun. I had fun riding the electric bike for the first time. More fun than I expected, to be honest. Um, and I'm excited to go ride that Stark Varg here in a couple weeks in May. Also excited for the Two Shark World Championships this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check out all of our coverage from that race on our website, motocrossactionmag.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.